let's move on to steroids here. So this is a big one because a lot of people are on steroids for a number of different reasons, right? Steroids, what do they, what do, they do? Like they're, they're very, very potent anti-inflammatories. So they block inflammation and they're very, very strong. And I, I mean, very potent, right? So anti-inflammatory. And so what they'll do is they'll make a person feel really good, really fast. So like if you've got, you know, swollen knees, swollen joints, swollen tissue, uh, severe pain, high doses of corticosteroids can kind of calm that down and really, really quickly improve your quality of life. But what happens is this can become, again, it can become a trap because the steroid itself, if, if, you, if you, for a lot of people, like for example, an injection, a lot of steroids are injectables, right? And so generally what they'll do is they'll work for three to six months and then they'll quit working. But this is, when you're talking about an injection, they're working for three to six months to achieve these different items, okay? So steroids, you know, reduce mucus production. They can all, and just when I say mucus production, we're talking about mucus production in the gut. Mucus, the mucus lining of the gut is reduced. We know that steroids actually can cause leaky gut. We also know that when you combine steroids with other pain medications, particularly non steroidal anti-inflammatories, that they work synergistically for the damage to be even greater. So there have been a number of research studies showing that correlation. There's some evidence now that's showing that they actually can alter gut bacteria in a negative way, promoting and leading to increased inflammation. We know that steroids lead to muscle atrophy, so they shrink the muscles. They, they actually cause your muscles to begin catabolizing themselves, breaking down. So you might lose muscle tone, which lowers your metabolic rate, increases your ability to gain weight because when, you're, when your muscle mass is reduced, remember, even if you're eating the same amount of calories, the lower your muscle mass, the more that same quantity of calories can start to impact, can, can impact your weight gain. Now, one of the things not on here, so we know that steroids can cause nutritional deficiencies, but one of the other things steroids do is they can increase sodium. And this is one of the reasons or one of the reasons why we can see oftentimes long-term use of steroids that increases blood pressure um, through that increased water retention. Because when you increase sodium, this is why a lot of people that take steroids swell, they water retention, right? Their hands, their feet. The other, the other side effect of steroids is that it increases blood sugar. So remember that, that steroids, um, the cortisol particularly, causes your liver to dump more sugar into your bloodstream. And that, you know, sugar increase... Um, can, can create a byproduct in the bloodstream called glycation, which affects the way your hormones work and function. And so it can be, become very problematic as well. So muscle atrophy, increases in blood sugar, increases in blood pressure, increased retention of water and sodium, alteration in gut bacteria, and it reduces your GI tract's ability to generate or produce mucus. Now, these are just the side effects of the drug directly, right? But let's talk about some of the indirect longer term consequences of nutritional deficiencies associated with steroids. Calcium deficiency, and it, this is listed in order from, think of this as greatest to least. So calcium, chromium, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, potassium, folate, vitamin A, and vitamin C, all those deficiencies can be contributed to or increased as a result of chronic steroid use. Now look guys, I'm not talking about you took a steroid one time for acute inflammation. I'm talking about those of you who you're, you know, you may be on, you may have a chronic inflammatory condition. You've been on steroids for now a month, two months, six months, a year. It's, this is when the deficiencies really, really start to set in. It's kind of a more longer lasting effect. So those of you who've had multiple injections of steroids in joints, or those of you who are taking this for multiple months on end, this is when you really start running into this type of problem. So Again, if we look at, at why these nutrients are important, if we ju just pick, hand pick a few, right? We talked about vitamin C earlier and how it helps the gut lining heal. Zinc, to form tight junctions, to form those seals in the gut, You've re your body requires zinc to do that. Magnesium regulates inflammation. There are a number of ways in which magnesium regulates inflammation. Vitamin D regulates your immune response. Remember that 70% 
of your immune system is your gut, right? It's called your GALT, your GALT, G-A-L-T, gastro-associated lymphoid tissue. It's like a massive set of tonsils that wraps around your small intestine. And vitamin D helps this GALT function appropriately. One of vitamin D's jobs is it helps regulate how strong your immune cells respond. And so vitamin D deficiency has actually been linked to a number of different forms of autoimmune disease, one of the reasons why it's an immunoregulatory potential. And again, steroids can cause vitamin D deficiency. And then we have calcium. Well, calcium, you have to understand calcium is a very, very critical electrolyte. And one of the problems with calcium deficiency that can affect and impact your gut has to do with spasms. So spasms in the gut oftentimes triggers, creates constipation. So we get constipation as a result of, uh, of electrolyte disturbance or electrolyte deficiency. So the gut basically spasms doesn't function properly. That can lead to constipation or slow peristalsis, which means that your food, instead of going through you and having a bowel transit time of 12 hours to, to 16 hours or so, you slow that transit time down. And so the food can actually stay in you longer than it should and it can rot. In some cases, especially if we're creating damage to the GI tract, nutritional deficit to the GI tract, altering the gut bacteria, instead of that food properly breaking down and digesting, it actually can stay in you, sit in you, and begin to rot. And so then that debris can start leaking into your bloodstream, leading to systemic inflammation. So again, steroids and leaky gut, if you're on steroids chronically and you're trying to overcome from autoimmunity and leaky gut issues, then this is a conversation you need to have with your doctor about what is the plan, like what is the goal? The steroid can't be the end game. It can't be the end result goal, um, you know, because if, if it is, you're gonna be sorely disappointed in your outcomes as you move into the future. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.